podcast starts now. First of all, Happy New Year. Yeah. And you know what? Yes, it's the new year. But I'll tell you this. And and I and I know, I know that 2023 is off to a raucous start. I know that everyone listening to this is wealthier, smarter, healthier, uh, more sexually aroused mm. than they were the any other previous year of their life. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're 95 or five. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I will say that currently we are recording in the previous new year. So you don't. So so if you don't see that spark, if you don't hear that spark in our voices, that's because that's why. it's still 2022 in our world. It's still 2022 here. But but I'll say to you, to you, I say Happy New Year and congratulations <laughs> on being in the first good year. <laughs> because this is the year that everything gets turned around. Finally. I am, it's so clear to me. It's so clear to me that 2023 is going to be that year. I mean, it's symmetrical. First of all, 2023, they're equal. And um, then it's, of course, the 12th year in the calendar of the ancients. And so those two things alone, I mean, it's it's numerology. I mean, when I woke up today on um, January 3rd, 2023, Mm -hmm. I saw... Um, that it was cold outside. And I actually looked up an almanac um, that said when it's cold outside in January 2023, that means the year is going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah, I I read that too. And it, it was so touch and go there because, you know, you never know January 3rd if it's going to be cold or tropical hot. <laughs> Every year it's a real mystery. And, yeah. um, and I did read that. And, you know, people say, oh, don't believe in that stuff. But um, this was actually... Uh, Anthony Fauci said this. He said, if it's cold on January 3rd, it's going to be, if it's cold on January 3rd, then this year is going to be a sleigh and a half Mauma. (laughs) Mauma. And he said that in an op-ed for the New York Times. You know, we started saying Mauma, trying to over-pronounce Mauma, and now I can't say it normal. I have to say Mauma. Well, it's sort of like Jamie Lee, it's like Jamie Lee Curtis saying trauma in that video that's how we are with mauma yes mauma <laughs> yes mauma <laughs> um i okay so predictions for the new year i think yeah. it's going to be sort of like i think it's going to be like 1994 all over again no one has any problems right. everyone's like bank accounts are chock full um th- there's no such thing as taxes they've that's decided right. to do away with them and mm-hmm. um yeah, it's everyone's going to have sort of a subtropical year, um, but without the precipitation. Right. It's subtropical, but it's not like because of global warming. No. It's because the vibes are good. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we can bring it back to the present day, the year 2022, in which we are currently recording, Ooh. I think it's important to address that we're both cranky. Yes, yeah, so we're both cranky. Um, but you know what, though? Earlier today, I was thinking back to something that made me really smile. And I was like, you know what? If you feel like you're getting cranky, which I was, just think back to that. What what, what made you smile? So I, I told you this uh, like a couple of weeks ago when it happened, but it was when I had that substitute yoga instructor. Uh-huh. And he was sort of, uh, I would say, not um, what you would normally maybe assume as someone with biases. Uh, would be a yoga instructor. He was a 13-year-old boy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, and he was really fucked up looking. <laughs> Kept talking about Roblox. <laughs> yeah. It was um he was a he was a sort of older gentleman. He was maybe close to 60. Um and he himself said just to, so that everyone can picture what I'm explaining, what I'm talking about. He himself said that he's been told he looks like William H. Macy. So that's sort of what you can picture. Um and I and he seemed, you know, he had really good vibes. And I was like, wow, I wonder if this guy is like a straight guy that was into Buddhism in the 80s. Like, that's the sort of vibe. Or if he's like an older gay guy who is doing this on the side. And I was, I couldn't crack it. I couldn't crack it. And he was, you know, he talked in a sort of neutral voice. So I couldn't tell if he, if, you know, which, which way he swung um, to go back to 1994 lingo. (laughs) Of course. And so then about 15, 20 minutes into the class, a song started and he said, Ugh, Florence and the Machine. I'm obsessed. <laughs> <laughs> and that moment just really 
brought me back to the holiday spirit on a day when I wasn't in it. Yeah, that is so powerful. Is there anything more? I mean, if and if you're in a bad mood now, I know January 3rd can feel sort of like a come down because it's no longer the new it's no longer New Year's Day. And mm-hmm. it's no longer the day after New Year's Day where it's still um, sort of new. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's basically just a Tuesday. Yeah. I don't know. The New Year actually kind of always does it for me. It like really does make me feel like, you know what? Let's restart. Like yeah. that the all of that year didn't count. And I it's I am grateful to always have naive optimism and be like, you know what? Fuck it. This is the best year of my life starting now. Do you have that more with New Year's or with your birthday? Oh, God. New Year's. Me too. Because it feels more like um, I like being among the people. You know, I like being like, we can all totally. have this. Totally. Um, when when it's my birthday, it's more like, uh oh. Like, it's sort of like, okay, so what did I, like, it's very personal. Like, what did I do in the right. last year? In a way that's like, that doesn't really feel good to just examine yourself in, in isolation. No, you have to examine the whole world. Yes. And... And also, you know, to think that your own birthday is a new beginning is very Messiah complex. Like, well, you're not, you're not Jesus. No. And also, like, do you make, like, birthday resolutions? If so, like, I can't imagine something more toxic. (laughs) I actually get a tree for my birthday and put presents (laughs) under it every year. That's crazy. On July 21st. I make everybody sing Auld Lang Syne. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, you came up with Christmas carols for your birthday that have the same tune of normal Christmas carols, but they're all like, Sam, 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 Sam. (laughs) Yeah, I I paid Spotify $1 billion so they could do a rap for me every time it's my birthday. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Happy New Year, Sam. Happy New Year, George. I it's gonna be I really do think it's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I've got a really good feeling about it. Me too. I Me too. I think us being cranky on December fourteenth, twenty twenty two, yeah, is a sign that the new year is actually gonna be better. Because yeah. um it's like that thing where like one time I was listening to a comedy podcast and they were talking about how like they were t- filming like a, a late night set and they bombed their their show right before the late night set and how that's actually mm-hmm. a good sign because that means you're actually going to crush the late night set. Of course. And of course. so I actually feel that way about um, my mood right now. We're sort yeah, of I mean, bombing if, the show to, I, I, to crush yeah, the late night set. If you can sort of... If you can just flop, flop, flop over and over again, that means at some point you're going to (laughs) slay. Hey, nowhere to go but up. Nowhere to go but up. And that has never been more true, sweetie. (laughs) I don't know. I actually kind of feel like our uh, crankiness is coming through too much. Is that bad? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Was that my fault? No, no, no. It's my, I think it's, I don't, I think it's a mutual issue. Well, here's what. Here, here's what I, I will say. When we are in the mindset of it being January 3rd, we, it's not coming across. But then when we go back to 2022, it is coming across. So really, all of us, all three of us have to be January 3rd, 2023. I am I am January 3rd. This is the face of January 3rd. This It really is like you actually can access the January 3rd within you at any given time. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what I always say? It's January 3rd somewhere. Uh, and cheers to that. <laughs> hey, I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, hun- oh, I've been drinking this whole time. <laughs> I'm blackout. Oh, well, you already did say. Let's it's, bring in our guest. You said the three of us, so I think it's time. Yeah, it's time. It's time. It's the Chekhov's guest, the classic scenario where two podcast hosts have to bring in one podcast guest after doing a bit about it being January 3rd. <laughs> Read about it in books. And so without further ado... It is my pleasure, honor, and delight to welcome to the stage Richard Perez. Hi. 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 January 3rd. So how's your... Yeah, it is literally... It's... Oh, my God. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. Oh, my God. George. Sam. Wait, how was your New Year's? You still have glitter on you from the party. Oh, my God. I had the best time ever. I... Was with a lot of people, with yeah. my friends, having fun. Mm. That's and so we, nice. And we that's so nice. We danced. Oh, oh. yeah, and it, and it felt really good. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
we just absolutely leave you hanging? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I get hornier. We're like, please fill the silence. Mm, it was so fun. Richard, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you something. What? And if you don't want to okay. do it, you say no and we'll cut out that I asked okay. you. Do you want to debut Pelly on this <laughs> You know what? Yeah. Okay, thank you. But I can't God. I can't um take the credit. Wait, I thought it was you. No, it was Charlie. Oh no. Oh, but no. but no no no. Charlie texted me about it. Yeah. Out of the blue. And then I was like, I'm I'm on board. I want to sign up for this project. And then we went okay. to two parties this weekend and I mm -hmm. debuted it. With the help of Charlie. Like I was like, Charlie, come on. Okay. Okay. Yes. Because I I'm sorry to say this, but I, you know, we were, Sam and I were at one of those, or at least one of those parties. Mm -hmm. And I could have sworn I asked who owns it and you said you did. But maybe I misremember. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I don't. Um, well, <laughs> I have a question, Richard. Would yeah. you define your friend Charlie Bardet as a litigious person? Yeah. What does that word mean? Is he going to <laughs> find ways to pursue legal action no. if you debut Pelly without him? Oh, my instinct says no. Okay. Okay. I don't think he'd be upset with me. I don't think so. I don't well, I'm not worried about okay. it if he gets upset. I'm worried if he got, if he gets legal. If he gets legal, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? If he gets legal, if he gets legal, I, I'm saying on the racing. record, if on the record, if Charlie Bardet, two time. Two times Straighter Lab guest and one time live. Should show I guest. text him? Should I be like, would you be upset if I said Pelly on the? <laughs> if he is upset, I promise we will have him back on and hear his side of the story. Okay, Pelly. <laughs> so Richard, what is Pelly? <laughs> Pelly is essentially, um, literally, Charlie texted me out of the blue. We both had like hundred degree fevers. We had the flu at the same time. And he just texted me out of the blue and was like, instead of period, I'm going to start saying Pelly. <laughs> just out of the blue. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm on. I want to do it. You were like Pelly. <laughs> and then. So it, it really is that simple. It's just, you know, you say something. Someone's like. Instead of period. However you say period. Yeah. Just say Pelly. Y just say Pelly. Yeah. And so a sort of an example where you would use it in a sentence is just like, it's really cold out today. Pally. <laughs> and so you have been, you know, this started and now it, you're sort of making it happen. How has that yeah. journey gone? Um, right. It's been, I've gotten a few texts, like messages from friends being like, what is Pelly? And I can tell they feel vulnerable asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And even one friend was, all right, my coworker today, like I said it to him. Now I say it without <laughs> realizing I'm doing it. And so we were just like talking. I don't even know. I don't even know what I said. And I was like, Pally. And then he was like, <laughs> Pally. And then he was like, he started laughing. And then he's like, you know, to be honest, what is that? <laughs> and then he told me he like Googled it. He was like researching. He was like upset. He didn't know what that meant. He's like, I'm out of the loop. I don't know what that is. Okay, this is though how, I mean, what I love about this, God, it, it's just, you know, so often something like on fleek, for instance, you know, it's like there's a viral video and then it catches on from there. But this is really ground up. Like this yeah. is homegrown. Grassroots product. Grassroots. Grassroots. Like even Charlie, someone who, someone who is very active on the internet, who, who of course goes he's viral on the so daily. He's so quiet about it. Yeah. But he's like. He he decided and texted just you, his close friend. Because he knew that I blab. Yeah. He knew. <laughs> and neither of you, what I really appreciate about this is that neither of you really ever defined it in any written way or online. Like, you really are just Do like, it. we're going to start saying it. <laughs> we're going to start saying it. And people will catch on. They because just Because it's will. ultimately not that complicated. It's not at all. Like, you, like yeah. We, we, we were talking about it on Sunday. We were like, what if we just... Literally, like, I don't know, like, we make something, like, in the new year, like, and yeah. we just sneak it in there and, like, don't even give it, yeah. not, like, we're just, like, I don't know, like, if him and I are, like, doing a video or something and then our characters are just, like, 
saying like or it's just like and that's not even the it's joke it's not even like, the, the joke, joke is exactly. that one you yeah know, it's like, like the joke Kelly. is that one of them anyway so <laughs> yeah, okay like, i think i'm gonna call the car like, <laughs> like yeah. it's like the video is about like how someone has a third ear in the back of their head and they're like not me having a third ear and then the other one's like pally and then they just go like <laughs> <laughs> and just keep it, sneaking it in or something it really speaks to your ability as a performer um, to just make something infectious because I'm really <laughs> yeah. liking this whole process where, you know, Charlie wrote and, of course, executive produced the project. <laughs> and right. you are, you know, taking it out on the road. You're you're testing yeah. it out in small rooms and then. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And bigger rooms. You and, know what? And just, it's just really taking off in this way. I feel the movement because I even feel myself like, like, I don't want to say it on this podcast because I want to like practice it in the mirror before I like do. And I'm like, totally. I feel the same way. Don't overthink it. It's so simple. You know what I think? I, every time I've said it so far, I have really forced it. And I'm like, I can't wait for a natural. I can't wait for a natural. At, by the end of this podcast, there will be a natural place where I will say Pelly. Pelly. And it will feel so fucking good. <laughs> that sounded good, Sam. Thank you. I was I was feeling it right then. Like I was <laughs> yeah. really feeling it. <laughs> so would you say Pelly. Charlie is sort of the the Jack Antonoff, he, and you're the Taylor um, Swift? Like he, you know, you he executive produced it, came up with it, but it's up to you and your, <laughs> you know, maybe you as a blonde woman are more relatable to the average <laughs> to the average American. Honestly, you were. Yeah, maybe I'll say yes. <laughs> like you're touring because it's like well, I'm it touring. sounds it sounds like at, coming out of your mouth. It people, feels right. You know, it sounds it feels right. Right, but it's yeah, his. and like I actually think it'll really help Charlie because like I remember like his solo project when he like had that word that he made up called like Noinky Persoinky Monkey Poison. Oh yeah. He actually did make up a word. Noinky for Swinky. <laughs> Noinky yeah, 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 yeah. for Swinky. And you know. So Noinky. Yeah. Noinky for Swinky and, and, was his bleachers. Right. Exactly. And it was like. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like. Yeah. Like that's good. Like sure. Like some people really like Noinky for Swinky. But like. Yeah. It's like Pelly is like. He's like taking this like bigger role in like more of exactly. a curatorial way. And it's like. You're really seeing his taste. And like. It's just. <laughs> And Pelly is simpler. Like, more people are going to... I mean, okay, so Noinky Per Soinky means nevertheless she persisted. Yeah, okay. Right? That's, that's Noinky Per And he himself, and, like, did vocals on that, right? He did vocals on it. And he, and he did like a write it himself. Like, he like yes, yeah, it's like a self-release. Yeah, and it was, like, good. Like, people do like it. But, like, not as many. You know what I mean? Like, quite simply, fewer people are are going to want to say nevertheless you persisted in like an ironic way <laughs> then then are going to want to say period in conversation yeah, right right uh-huh wow wow i um i'm just so honored that he yeah i'm just so honored he like knew that my voice would fit his project yeah yeah and you're you know you're a relatively new artist mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> so to to trust you with that to trust you with that and to say, like, you know, she might not be a household name yet, mm -hmm. but I can't imagine someone else having Pelly. Like, I can't, it can't be a, you know, it can't be an Eliza Schlesinger. No, <laughs> yeah. it can't be a John Mulaney. Like, yes, you know, of course it would be. John Mulaney being like Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know, yes, John Mulaney, like. Right. Sure, John Mulaney can sell anything. He's huge. Like he can go around and tour and 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 spread <laughs> Pelly. But like it wouldn't it wouldn't be special. Right, right. No, it wouldn't have the same impact. And it would feel forced. It would feel forced. Right. It would, it would forced. be right. It would be so like manufactured. Mhm. Mm and that's why I mean that is why Charlie is like Jack Antonoff is because he thought of this with you. It's like Jack Antonoff writes different things for Lana yes. than he does for Taylor than he does for I'm Lord. I'm kind of Lord a little, no? Yeah, definitely 100%. Definitely 100%. No question. Very Lord. And Pelly Thanks, is guys. giving Lord. <laughs> Pelly. And not just because it sounds like you're speaking in a New Zealand accent. Pelly. 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 <laughs> Can I read the text? Yeah. Oh, sure. On Thursday, 8.13 p.m., Charlie texted me. When I say Pelly, I mean period. 
And I said, ha, 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 No, that's fucking cute, though. Pelly. <laughs> well, I told Charlie, I texted Charlie, I think Pelly is going to become the new bench. Yeah. Mm. Do you think you could be that like big? That, that is the level of, of um, because bench, here's the thing with bench. I mean, much like a lot of Jack Antonoff's work, <laughs> it is bo- it's both indie and mainstream. Yes. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like. It's sort of Carly Rae Jepsen. Like, it's like, it, it's indie enough to have a cool factor, but it's mainstream enough that, like, yes, Taylor Swift could cover it mm-hmm. for uh, Tiny Desk. Oh, my God. Wow. So, like, John Mulaney could say it. Oh, John Mulaney could definitely say it, but here's the thing. But but when he does, then people will be like, uh, okay, I guess Pelly's over. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, yeah. some, you know, we will be. But, like, there will be a lot of right. people that will be, like, wearing Pelly shirts at that point. Right. Um, that's true. I mean, there will be like keep common Pelly shirts. <laughs> there will be like, or sorry, keep common Pelly on. Good job, Pelly on. There will be like, you know, sort of. Um, I mean, I hate to say it because this is not my story to tell, but there will be feminine products that use Pelly to mean the other kind of period, and that will be oh, like a cute thing on subway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Pelly. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think what was so amazing about the rollout of this product is. <laughs> that um you really created sort of an exclusiveness Mm -hmm. that made people you know feel like they're on the outside and and in a way that really makes them want to to understand pelly and really makes them want to be able to perform it themselves exactly um i found i mean when we were at this party a few days ago Mm -hmm. and i was across the room and i think i was even you know maybe walking over to your section Mm -hmm. and hadn't even been to your section of the party yet so you know i was already feeling othered in many ways was roped off yeah and so you um actually as a group all looked at me and said sam say pelly and i said i don't know what that means and you said, just say it. Just say Pelly. And, and like, then I said, Pelly. And, and then screamed. everyone goes, ha, 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 yeah. And it, That probably um, didn't feel it, good. I'm sorry. No, it felt, it really felt um, middle school bully-y sort of back of right. the bus vibes. Yeah. But in a way that triggered such a an emotional response that I said, I will never, from this point on, I will never not know what Pelly is. Yeah. Um, for better or worse. Sometimes you need to do those tactics the marketing is just very genius yeah, yeah the marketing no is... the marketing is and and i think uh, sam you're pointing to such an important part of pelly which is it sounds exclusive but as soon as you figure it's it out so it's so obvious so, so clear it's like it, a duh. it's not like there's nothing complicated yeah. about it and so it's really kind of in that way uh poptimist mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. and um mm. Pelly. 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 Just like so like, yeah. <laughs> Pelly. Pelly. Oh, God, it feels good to say. So, so, like, I mean, so like proud of yourself. Yeah, proud of yourself for like punctuating whatever your statement was. Yeah. yeah. Pelly. 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 Should we do our first segment and just know in our hearts that Pelly will come back? Yeah. Yeah. And I also just want to say, George, thank you for bringing up Pelly. Yeah, honestly, I think, thank you so yeah. much. And if Charlie does get upset with me on January 3rd, 3rd. <laughs> I mean, he probably won't because he'll be in a good mood, I think. In ja- Yeah. Right. It's the new year. Yeah. Like, he'll well, be like, too, that's so fun. Too- to Charlie's credit, this is the third time we've yeah. talked extensively about him on this podcast when he has not been here. <gasps> it's true. So I could see, you know, at, at some point it's sort of like, okay, what's your guys' deal? Like, you know, like I could see him like reaching a breaking point. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess I could see him reaching you guys a breaking just point. Keep talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I don't know what's so fucking funny about me. Like, I'm just a guy. And, like, even, like, your friend. I'm just writing words. Yeah. And, by the way, I mean, I do want to say, Richard, you know, you had... And I'm not saying this to blame you in any way, but... Thank you. There's a sort of Machiavellian... You know, you you had the chance to not debut Pelly if you wanted to really check in with Charlie. And, you know, maybe when he was on a groundbreaking, critically acclaimed comedy podcast, he could have done it himself. 
But I know I saw it in your eyes. Like you're like, I'm a star. Oh mm-hmm. my god. I have the spotlight on me now. I'm not gonna let this moment pass. What, just so I could maintain a friendship? <sighs> That's not what this is. <laughs> No, Friends I thought it was forever. so amazing that you showed like this like Hollywood like cutthroat like mindset sort of like like that's I'm what we were really like looking that. for in you. Like shut you were, up. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and by the way, Richard, it's not just that you showed that side of yourself, but then you also stressed so much. You did the whole like my dear friend Charlie. Oh, Charlie, let me find the text. <laughs> so you're really sort of it's like. I mean, it's very like Taylor Swift doing the era when she talked about her girl squad and all of them, you know, of course, hate her. It's like, you know, you're, you're, you want to have it both ways. You want to be known not as a diva, as, as someone who is friends with everyone, as someone who everyone supports. But behind the scenes, you're going on podcasts and t- taking credit for Pelly. <sighs> that really sucks. Yeah. I think it's great. <sighs> Cut. We're gonna just cut this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just cut this whole thing, and I'll get my okay, team. Okay, we'll just cut this. Whole yeah, yeah. Th- and okay, if and if we good. don't, then my legal, etc. Yeah, yeah. Consider it cut. <clears throat> Pelly. 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 I'll send you guys so... merch. <laughs> <laughs> Sleep masks. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pelly. Yeah. And, and guess who's and guess who's not getting a cut of the proceeds? Charlie. Charlie Barber. <laughs> Yeah, people go to his like go to his show, like Exploration Live in Pelly t- <laughs> t-shirts. In Pelly t-shirts, and they're like, Reminding "Oh, him. do you know Richard Perez? He invented yeah. this." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, I used to know her." I just have to keep saying like he came up with it. Yeah. Well, we're we're gonna edit out all. You're of gonna that, edit so it out. Gonna sound, <laughs> it's gonna sound like you are taking credit, for it. and then you're gonna say like they gave me the villain edit. They gave me the villain edit. And we're gonna be like, she's crazy. Oh my god, he's unstable. It sounds crazy. It's like I came up with Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Richard, we absolutely have to get into our first segment. Otherwise, oh, sorry, I will sorry, sorry, shit sorry, my okay. pants live on air. Ooh. Okay. And um, no one wants to see that again. Oh, brother. <laughs> Richard, our first segment is called Straight Shooters. And in it, we ask you a series of rapid fire questions to gauge your familiarity with and complicity in straight culture. Um, basically, it's this thing or this other thing, and you just have to pick one. And the only rule is no follow up questions, or we'll scream at you as loud yeah. as we can. Yeah. Okay. Should we start? Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Richard, corporal punishment or corporate self-assessment? Corporal punishment. Mm. Richard, an open concept kitchen or an open casket funeral? Open casket funeral. (laughs) Okay, Richard, rock, paper, scissors or lock, stock and two smoking barrels? Rock, paper, (laughs) scissors. Keeping a journal or sleeping with the colonel? Sleeping with the colonel. Oh. Um, your reputation era or the nation's reconstruction era? <laughs> hmm. uh, my reputation era. <laughs> okay, Richard. Zach Braff or literally any guy from the street? Um, <laughs> <laughs> any guy from the street. Okay, Richard. <laughs> A snow day, a payday, or a gay day at Disney World in which all are welcome, no matter who you love. Uh, <laughs> the last one. Okay, Richard. The seven year itch or a seventh tier bitch? Uh, <laughs> seven year itch. Wow. wow. Good uh, job. Really, really good job. You know, yeah. there was such a calmness to you and almost a coldness where I was like, Oh, he hates us. Uh, that's how. That's the vibe. I, uh, you know, I, I just get nervous. Really? Do you really? Yeah, and I feel like in these situations, like I'm just like so. Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, I guess I do come off a little cold sometimes, and I really don't mean to. I think I'm just like trying to like answer as quick and clear as I can. Of course, of course. And, but sometimes I get that way in general, like in in I don't know when I'm like talking. To people, Richard, stop crying. Okay. <laughs> Richard, we asked like, you. Like I'm on the not podcast. cold. Like what the fuck? We asked you to be on the podcast for a reason. We both we we know who you are, and I'm we a know. Bitch. 
Pelly. Richard, we I both... stole Charlie's like idea. I, I ruined everything. Richard, listen I to me. I have to go. <laughs> no, Richard. Uh, Richard. We both Richard, like we both watched your audition tape for this podcast and it was so fucking funny. Like we saw that and we said, This girl is a star and needs to be on our podcast. And mm -hmm. so like Charlie can't take that away from you. Like no one in America can take that away from you. Pelly. Do you mean that? I mean that. Richard, look at me. Richard. What? Pelly. <laughs> what? Richard. What? <laughs> Richard. What? <laughs> what? Richard, don't you dare take that tone with us. What? What? Richard, we're gonna get back. We're gonna get okay, back. Okay, let's the then let's do that. And we're gonna and 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 you are gonna crush this. You're gonna knock it out of the park. Yes, I am. Pelly. Okay. Pelly. Pelly. Say it together. So are you ready to restart? Can we say it together, the three of us? One, yeah. okay. two, one, three. two. Pelly. Pelly. That was cute. <clears throat> okay, podcast restarts now. Okay. So it's podcast January third, and now. Richard <clears throat> Perez is in the studio and happy as a clam. <laughs> <laughs> Richard, you just got back from your uh, big tour promoting Pelly. Yeah. How did it go? It was a dream come true. I mean, working with Charlie Bardet is just <laughs> a complete dream, fantasy. Just everyone that yeah. I got to meet on tour um, was just so friendly, so exciting. And the crowd was just, we really, really appreciate all the support. Yeah. Did anything surprise you? Um, I... Um, Anything that surprised me, I would say. Were any parts of the country like not? Well, I mean, you did get into some hot water when you had your stop over in Moscow. Do you want to address that? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I can't really talk about that yet. Right. Uh -huh. um, but I do want to say that all parties involved are just really, really excited about this collaboration. <laughs> <laughs> me charlie moscow <laughs> yeah 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 that's an amazing um squad squad goals i would say la was so fun oh well la is the yeah, best it was so such an amazing fun. city yeah. I mean, the only reason to go to Moscow is to test that material so you can take it to LA. I went to, I did it at Largo. Oh, oh yeah. And I just got on stage. I said, Pelly, and then we all went home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had an hour long set and you said, is it okay if I just do one second? And the, they were like, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're Richard fucking Perez. <laughs> <laughs> so, Richard. Yeah. We need to get into the topic for the day. Okay. Pelly. Pelly. Um, so, uh, you guys, it's not happening naturally for me. <laughs> well, you're forcing it. You have to wait for it to happen. I'm really forcing it, and it really is so annoying because I was actually doing Do it. Do you ever say period in your real life? I do, but I was doing it so well at the party, and I actually... It felt so, so good. Middle school bullying. Sam. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and now it's not happening. But, but, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. We're going to move on to the topic. We're going to move on. And I have my whole life ahead of me to do Pelly. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. And also, you I know what? This is what? Do. This is what I'm predicting. I yeah. bet oh. you when January 3rd, it's going to be natural. You are so right. You're going to listen to this episode and be like, oh, I remember who I that young version of me. Exactly. It's like I was still figuring it out. I was it figuring out. it I out. The things I was out. worried about, I'm not worried about them now anymore. And that's actually part of, okay, so this is the last thing I'll say about Pelly. That's part of the appeal to where f there are three stages of Pelly. First, you feel like an outsider because you don't know what it is. Then you learn it and you're like, oh, it's so easy. I'm I'm part of the club. And then you try to do it and it's actually a little harder than you think. Right, right. It's a little embarrassing at first. Or or it's kinda yeah. like yeah. Am I even exactly. saying this right. It's so it's too simple right. that it's like it's that just, I'm yeah. like, what is there what's the I must be doing something wrong. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. And so then finally fourth step is you do start doing it right and it comes naturally. Yeah. And then it just happens. Yeah. And it's just yeah, and it's and it comes naturally to you. I th it's I think it's really exciting. <laughs> <laughs> So Richard, we, uh, we the, you and I talked about the topic before the episode started, but 
Sam wasn't on the Zoom at the time. So this is something I need the, help flushing out. So well, you now get to tell Sam for the first time and we get to see his reaction. I'm gonna film it and post it to YouTube. It's like grandma's react <laughs> to Lil Nas X, but it's like Sam reacting to the top. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Pelly all over again, to be honest. Yeah, 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 once that's, again that's on the right. outside. <laughs> it's straight, yeah. <laughs> okay, Richard. My Take it away. My topic stems from my experiences. I got a BFA. I went to art school and I studied photography. Mm. So I think my topic is taking pictures. Wow. Wow. That is, first of all, the backstory surprises me. Mm. Same. I mean, Richard, I obviously think you're capable of literally anything you put your mind to. <laughs> I think the I'm inventor of Pelly... Um, uh, the rightful heir of the Pelly fortune uh, <laughs> can do anything he wants. However, I just, I am, when you said be a fair, I was like, in performance, in performance. Exactly. Exactly. I feel the wow. same way. To me, you read as classically trained. Really? I would say actually to a fault. Yeah, it's a, it's a little uptight sometimes. <laughs> you know, sometimes in conversation, you will immediately embody a character. It's, yeah. And I'm like, well calm down i was just we we're just ordering lattes yeah yeah <laughs> and you're like i'm a widow <laughs> right, right right i am that. yeah I, yeah you're right I, and I, for me it's like about like the way you project your voice it's like okay like we don't need to like like you're not on stage right now like you don't need to be like projecting right. to the back of the room you know what i mean right you are someone who has done vocal warm-ups <laughs> before i started this zoom but i but what's interesting to me about that mm -hmm. compared to photography photography by definition is turning the camera the other way Turning the camera the other way. Not towards your Away from Usually, you. yeah. I mean, of course, unless you're taking a selfie, which I guess counts as a photograph. Right, a selfie, self-portraits. Yeah, yes. but, but traditionally photography is an art form. You're taking photos of other you're things. You're taking photos of other things. You're documenting other things. Yeah. Maybe it's documenting that I feel... I mean, I we could certainly go in that direction, but I want you to be not... I, I want you to like embrace photography as a topic because I think it's such a beautiful topic. I feel like you're not, you're second guessing yourself. I am second. I feel really insecure right now. Okay. <laughs> Richard, Richard? Not me insecure. <laughs> I have to come up with like a Richard. different phrase with that intonation. <laughs> Confuse everyone. <laughs> well, why, what, what um, reads straight about photography to you? Yeah. I just feel like uh what what reads straight about it is maybe okay, personally I'm totally projecting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm like I feel when I was like not out, I feel like I used it as like a vehicle to kind of like have a reason to be like in a space. <laughs> wow. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. That's kind of dramatic, but like but like you know, like I kind of just like I feel like it it was this way that I couldn't really face my own interiority so much. But I mean, I was in a way because I'm like taking pictures. There's a reason why I'm reacting to something I see and then like, at you know, curating it together, like put it online. Like there's a, there's something I was trying to say, which is like I'm gay, I think, ultimately. Like that's well, probably yeah. what my whole <laughs> BFA. That's what, that's what all great art is about. That's what all great art is about. Yeah. And yeah. so um, I'm gay and I want to perform. <laughs> yeah. It was just like, it was photos of giant cocks. Yeah, Yeah, it was just cocks on stage. <laughs> what is he trying to say? Cocks on stage. With a little mic, with a little with mic. With a little and mic and, little, and um, like hat. a red curtain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all of your photos. Just cocks all of your dressed photos as like starlets. Cocks dressed as different performers. Marilyn like Monroe. A Charlie Chaplin cock. A Marilyn Monroe cock. <laughs> I want to be loved by you. I'd, I'd purchase. Guess what? I would purchase. And and by the way, that would literally at this moment in time do well. The, 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 that would definitely. I mean, I could. I mean, I don't know. You could just do it. I could just do yeah, it. It's not and too make, late. It could be merch. Yeah. yeah. Sam and I will model. Oh, <laughs> would you want to do a collab, Stradio Lab and me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we could do our our Pelly and, and Stradio Lab. And, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it could be our our dicks dressed as ourselves. So Sam's would have a mustache, mine would have a beard and a sort of buzz head <laughs> and glasses. <laughs> and we would have little podcast mics. And it could be, you know, we we could be. I don't know. I feel like <laughs> you could sort of set up a photo studio and it could be like the no hate 
uh, <laughs> photos when, where they write no hate yeah. on their face, but it's each person like taking photos of their dicks as different starlets. That's amazing. Oh my god, that's so genius. That actually is genius, unfortunately. Yeah, like I feel like you would have your thesis would have been a slay if we went to school together. Well, it's because I'm out. Right, right, right. It, it so it wouldn't have had the tension of the closet. Yeah, yeah. right. The tension of the so closet. So, Richard, do you believe that all photographers are straight or all no. photographers are gay but can't admit it? I think maybe more so the <laughs> latter than the first. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. I would I would lean more towards that a little bit. But I think just in general, like, I don't know, like, there's something about, like, wanting to take a picture of, like, something, like, a building mm-hmm. or, like, anything, I guess, whatever, like, your surroundings that just feels, not always, just in, in general can feel kind of, um, like, you're pulling away a little from yourself <laughs> or like so you're saying there's there's a repression there's a repression a general repression. of an there's emotional thing and i think that's very straight yeah yeah, yeah totally you know? does that make sense i don't know there's a no, bad that one makes complete sense <laughs> no it's not a bad one at all it's not a bad one at all i i think the repression thing makes sense i think also at its core and i understand that you know it is very easy to argue against this but at its core it's a very literal art form too where yeah. it's like well, it's straighter than painting. Right, right. You're just like documenting something. Or it's like, it, it can also be, like, yes, photography can be beautiful and it can be artistic, but it can also be so just like what it is. It's yeah. like getting your yearbook photos taken, getting passport photos, a wedding photographer. Like, is there anything straighter than someone whose job is a wedding photographer, just like taking the same photos over and over again? Right, um, totally, even exactly. Like, you know, uh, just reading a newspaper and you have like, don't think of like a, a really like artsy magazine cover shoot or something, but just like they have to have a photo to show you what the article is about. Right. And like, I, I just, I'm thinking about like, cause I graduated with like a lot of straight guys, like in, in art mm-hmm. school studying photography. And like, I feel like there's some of them that I remember, or maybe like the grade younger, where it's just like they photograph like car parts and like it's it's all like, oh, like I caught this in this design and Yeah. I don't know, like like it's it's like they're making it about something else. Yeah. Do you think finding beauty in the existing world is gay or straight? I think finding beauty in the existing world is I don't know. You should ask that in the next thing. What's that segment okay. called? <laughs> oh, straight, straight shooters. shooters. Yeah, <laughs> I should just ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, what, what do you think? I think that's a genius question. I think yeah. finding beauty in the existing things is it's, straight because it's an embrace of sort of the status quo, and it's saying like of the status quo. Exactly. It's saying we don't need to okay. change anything. Like, let's just. It's yeah. like actually, let's like. Let's keep things how they are. And actually, exactly. I think the traditional family is like really good. Like, <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Wow. Sam. Like, and you would think it's the opposite, but like that guy, the guy in American Beauty that is like brought to tears by the plastic yes. bag could not be straighter. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, why are you crying, like truly crying and orgasming because of a plastic bag? It's literate. Yeah. And I feel like it, it's. You like that? You sick right. fuck? Right. And I'm like, clean up your neighborhood, right? Clean, <laughs> pick that up. Dream of a better future. Pick that up. Pick, pick it up. How about you fuck? don't take a photo of it and you do some activism? There's footage of me. And you like, pick it up. <laughs> I'm in the background, like <laughs> walking up to him. What the fuck? Pick that up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, finding. <laughs> okay, whereas I'm trying to think like. I have to be completely honest. I understand mm-hmm. that photos can be some photos are better than others. I do yeah, know this to be true. And some photos are so gay. Well, mm-hmm. obviously. Like photos of dicks. Yes. I mean, gay photography is its very own genre. Yes. Yes. And it's actually straighter than straight photography. Ooh. <laughs> Hell yeah. Because talk about literal. <laughs> it's like at least straight photographers have the courtesy to take a photo of a plastic bag. Gay photographers are literally only taking photos of dicks. Right, right. Or like, <laughs> right, like ripped guys, like shirtless. Yeah. Which, you know, we over here at Straight Lab Incorporated really celebrate art. You know, I think if there were no tasteful photos of guys in various mm-hmm. stages of nudity, 
what would we have? Yeah, true. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I mean, Rembrandt? Right. I don't think so. I don't think so, honey. So, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it's like the two kinds of photography are finding beauty in the existing world or making something beautiful to photograph it. Yes. Yes. And so the question is, are both of those straight? They can be. Is Annie are like Annie Leibovitz's photos straight? I would argue yes. E, yeah, I think they're straight. Why would you argue yes? Because it's so. Maybe what I'm equating in my mind with straight in in terms of photography is like um, it, it's uh, it's just serving its purpose. Like it's so it's so just like literal and like direct and and uh like mechanical <laughs> like mm -hmm. or really technical or like something like that like it's like more about that than like than so much like the actual meaning of the thing or whatever i feel like what you're like i don't know with a photo person there's a lot of like gear <laughs> yes exactly like, yeah, yeah when you have to be like a gearhead and be like okay well i need this kind of light i need this kind of light oh what are you shooting are you shooting with a blah, 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 and i'm just like, yeah <laughs> what the fuck and like they're always like replacing the battery on like the flash I'm, like, I'm taking a picture of my legs <laughs> and i'm putting it next to a picture of my mom yeah <laughs> sam you're so wise to bring it back to the materiality of the apparatus <laughs> that is being used like it's not i like there's actually no reason to, to to take it so high concept like the reason it's straight is because you're literally using a tool gross yeah <laughs> right like pick up a paintbrush and, then, like, and the tool is like expensive and like you can there's yeah. like all these different accessories but none of the accessories like are feminine at all it's yeah. like, oh yeah, this is like the XL W G two. Right. And it's like, right. oh really? Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh, I was gonna get that. Shooting? How much was that like four thousand? Oh, you're shooting with that yeah. lens. Uh, <laughs> this is yeah, yeah. You might as well be into cars. At right. That exactly. Point. Literally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I guess the question becomes: Is the fact that the smartphone democratized photography gay or straight? Um, well. I think it's pretty gay. And I was even going to yeah. say, you know, we brought up selfies earlier, but I do think the selfie as photography is inherently a queer form. Yes, definitely. Yes. But that's because it's there's performance in it as well as... And right. also there's no technical element. Like, you're just like, this is what the no, Lord no, it's, has given it's completely, me an iPhone 10. I feel like a selfie is totally just like inspired for the most, very generally speaking. It's just like, oh, I'm, I'm just going to... Oh, oh gonna capture this like i'm i'm like feeling totally. myself it's like an emotional response to like yeah how you're fe how you look how you're feeling who you're with or whatever whatever the reason that is making you take a selfie and like it's in the emotion tied to it richard this brings up a really interesting point and mm -hmm. i think you're kind of at the intersection of both of these things where you literally have a bfa in photography and you know i've only been following you on social media for a few months now but you um, post a lot of selfies, I think it's fair to say. Okay. So as someone with a degree in both, um, <laughs> what the fuck? Drag. Yeah, what the and fuck? that's not a drag. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> you do. You're always doing the little middle finger thing. Richard, I think your selfies are really beautiful. Yeah, no, they are. But you agree there's a lot of them. For listeners that don't, <laughs> that don't know me. I like do duck face with like my middle finger in a basement. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> at my job. <laughs> yeah, you love doing duck face middle finger in the basement. Yeah. Like just, oh my god, you're yeah, doing it now. Like, Pelly. Pelly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. So Sam, Sam you? ask. At, I you're getting at something so important. I want you to ask. Uh, you well, I was gonna say like, where do you like? Do you feel that? Uh, <laughs> like that has been your journey. Like, is that you accepting your queerness? Oh, right. To go from photographing in a professional context to simply taking selfies in a basement on your iPhone. <laughs> with a duck phone is and a that finger. With a duck, 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 duck yeah, face. Is that like, is that what coming out is? Yeah. Coming to terms with one's queerness. For me, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I stand out in the photo industry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see Ryan McGinley walking around being like Pelly. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, he will be. 
He might. I hope so. <laughs> You're gonna. No, I do. Like, I do you? agree that iPhone, like when something is shot on an iPhone, mm-hmm. that is gay because literally a monkey could yeah. do it. That's yeah, true. yeah. There's it's not yeah, it's not so technical. It's intuitive. It's intuitive. It's so intuitive. We're born knowing how. You we're literally born yeah. knowing how to take a picture with we're a phone. We're born this way, knowing how to it's take born a this way. picture. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How's that wow. for logic? That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Richard, be honest. Did it hurt your feelings when I said that you take a lot of selfies? <laughs> no, actually it actually really didn't. If anything, it made me think about it. I'm like, oh, do I? But I guess I do. That's a really big part of my output. My thing. Yeah. Well, it's your art. My output. Yeah. My creative. It's yeah. my art. <laughs> but like selfies, it's not like selfies. Like it's just me being like, I look good. Right. It's like I actually don't look good in all of them. Like I'm, I'm kind of, I'm being really like silly in them. I'm Cindy Sherman. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think anybody posts selfies to be like, I look good here anymore? Mm, so, yeah. yeah. Okay. I think and okay, that's, debunked. that's straight, right? That's straight. Yeah. Well, or, no. or it's more okay. just like basic. Yeah. 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 Really true. Most gay people are straight in that that's sense. True. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> well, I'm I was, almost... wait, one more. I was thinking, I haven't seen many. I feel like I used to see way more Twitter gays posting selfies that were just sort of like tuesday alert or like <laughs> felt felt weird today like i guess i'm in the spirit of the Wait. holidays and are these uh flattering selfies or, or not flattering selfies? flattering selfies and i feel like they've kind yeah. of gone away like i and maybe it's a twitter issue but i feel like i literally think it might be a twitter issue because i've noticed this too and now <laughs> I, like it, there was just a time when everything that would be suggested to me. It was when we recorded our episode with Sarah and we were talking about captions that are like, it's giving turkey girl. Uh (laughs) Because every second tweet was someone being like, leg day, more like, ugh day. Yes. (laughs) And it's like them at the gym. (laughs) Yeah, that has completely, not completely, but a lot disappeared in a way that's weird. Or I'm sorry, but my of course favorite genre is someone wearing the most normal outfit you've ever scene and then posting uh i'm serving dad on a cw show yeah yeah yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) well the one they always do also is like the pixar dad like they're like oh and it's like yeah he's a guy with a mustache like you have a mustache like it's fine right (laughs) (laughs) i want to address one more thing Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of other sort of cliche types of photos. Like another one is Polaroids. Yes. Oh. Polaroids are, um, it's funny. It's like what we were saying like earlier about like, uh, what were we talking about before we recorded? I think we were talking about how something, oh, like the screenshot that you sent, Sam, uh, that's mm-hmm. very like MIA, mm-hmm. like the cover art of that album with like a bunch of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sam's screen was kind of covered in different QuickTime windows, and he was like, "It looks like the MIA cover that is sort of digital brutalist." Yeah, vibes. and then I was yeah. like, my in, my intuition was like, "That's so 2013. That's so like Tumblr. That's so BFA. Yeah, that's so SVA. <laughs> that's so Pratt. Whatever." And like, but then you brought up a point. You're like, "That's so funny that like we reference it there when it is referencing like 90s clip art or like whatever." I feel like Polaroids is kind of in a similar model it's just like cyclical Mm -hmm. but then i'm sure it changes each time it comes back it serves like a or i don't know appeals to maybe like in a different way yeah like a polaroid today is doing like 2010 hipster culture right exactly it's it's harkening back to that and 2010 when it was actually like that it was like whoa like and it, it was like hard to find film and it was like oh my gosh, like this really remarkable, it like felt very like, I don't even know what the word is. <laughs> it, it is crazy to live through. I don't know what I'm saying. I feel like we are the age where we're living through the second wave of nostalgia cycles yes. in a way that is actually terrifying. Yeah, it kind of bums me out actually. I miss feeling just authentically good about stuff. Yeah. I mean like, this is actually really cool. Yeah, because um, yeah. <laughs> I hate I never want to be the person that's like, <laughs> like, oh, my God, they don't even know, like, that's actually from this album and it's actually a cover. Like, I hate 
when people oh they don't even know that that show's just like a pastiche of 80s sitcoms <laughs> like and i'm like right. shut up yeah, uh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then someone's gonna make a show that's uh about two gay guys making a podcast and one of them has a mustache and and we're gonna have to be like hey <laughs> you don't even know that was about <laughs> <Spider-Man."> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Oh, it's so cruel. What a cruel world. <laughs> Wait, okay. I also want to say about photography. One time I met this like really, really Christian guy um, who was a photographer and he would like only take pictures of like water and like like flowers and ducks and stuff. And um, that felt extremely closeted guy to me. Totally. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. What's the deal with nature photography? I mean, nature photography... If I remember correctly, probably one (laughs) of the first subjects captured. When we figured out the camera obscura, (laughs) we were we were like, okay, we're gonna this big. I guess we'll take a photo of a mountain. We will capture something that will be still. And that was our very earth. Mm -hmm. So there's that origin to landscapes and and I or nature or anything i don't know but i don't know but then there are ways to i don't know it's one of those things that's like like that guy you're describing that guy taking pictures of like ducks or whatever like like i could totally see that being like this uh introspective um like expression or like you you're wanting to Mm -hmm. express something but you just can't i mean if picture says more than a thousand words okay and I'm so happy you brought that up. Yeah. Well, okay. First of all, I think we can all agree that nature photography either means you have reached a state of nirvana where you're one with God or you're closeted. Yes. 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 Um, so that's fine. <laughs> Except like photographing like lions or something. Like that's so straight. Well, that that's because they're masculine. Yeah. Yeah. Like the National Geographic uh, Wildlife Photography Contest is one of the straightest things I've ever heard of in my life. And then yeah, always like what wins that's... is like something coming out of the water holding exactly. a fish. But, you know, of course, congrats. Yeah. Of course. I mean, catching a fish on camera is really hard. They're so fast. <laughs> By the way, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with people that play football, too, but I don't think it's ethical. Right. <clears throat> I'm actually not that impressed. Yeah, I'm not either. I could do it. I mean... <laughs> I'm like, literally put me in that's actually like of all the sports that's like the one where i'm like what are you even doing you're yeah. just ru- what are you even doing i know literally all you have to do is like knock your head against another person's head yeah like i guess the person that throws the ball there's a lot of like pressure because you don't have much time but it's like who cares yeah i don't know yeah well, yeah no i <laughs> i agree football sucks <laughs> Final thoughts. I want to get everyone's final thoughts on the following question. Is a picture worth a thousand words? Thank you for asking that. I Mm. think, um, honestly, a lot of times, no. I agree. I think that is like so messed up to even say that. Sometimes (laughs) I'm like, (laughs) that's like being like, (laughs) because like, I feel like actually it's like kind of wasteful because you can. With about 10 words, you can create like a beautiful image in someone's mind. I completely agree. Yeah, I can. It's actually like so offensive. And (laughs) you and we have to have more respect for the written word. The idea that you took a photo, what, on your iPhone and you think that's worth a thousand thousand words. It's like duck in water. Are you fucking out of your mind? Unbelievable. It's fucking crazy. I mean, it's like picture prompts. (laughs) (laughs) And no one wants to do those. Wait, what are picture prompts? You ever have that in like standardized tests? or something like um there's like they show you a picture and you just have to like come up with a story like five paragraphs oh Oh. literally a thousand words yeah but (laughs) but guess what though those are a thousand words that like but you're it's all you came up yeah it's yeah you can be inspired right right but it's like it's not actually worth the a thousand words yeah you're forging you're actually a thousand words you're forcing exactly and you are Elevating the photo by it by accompanying it with your thousands of words. Right. I think a photo is worth upwards of twenty words. Mm. You know what? I'll, I here's what I think <laughs> is that ultimately it depends. And if you show me a photo that's literally just like to use a sort of cliche example, someone's brunch, someone's Instagramming their brunch. Guess what? That's worth exactly one word, and that word is brunch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe two words. Yeah, brunch binge. Bread to binge. <laughs> <laughs> P- 
Kelly. No. Kelly. Yeah! <laughs> that was delicious. Um, great. <laughs> so photos are not worth a thousand words. Um, it's... but you know what? Some words are worth a thousand words. Whoa. I agree. Like Pelly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, That's like what Pelly. I'm getting to. Or like the word um effervescent or juxtaposition. Yes. Oh my That's god. A thousand oh, you word know what word words. is worth like two thousand words right now? Prescriptive. Wow. I love the I word love when people, people use like, it in not a medical Oh my god, of yeah. course. Being I'm, like, oh, you're being like, I don't want to be prescriptive, but yeah, I'm like, when people okay, use it. Tell that me way. whatever. You're yeah, a genius. I'm like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. And you know, you know what word I hate? Prescriptive to me, it opens up my world. I'm I I'm, I so want to know what is or is not prescriptive. Mm-hmm. You know a word I hate right now that is being overused? The word unserious. I oh yes. Heard. Have you seen that, Richard? No. I think Unserious might be like, like your Pelly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking hope no. not because it's a flop. <laughs> no, I hate Unserious. It's such a, it's, it's you know what so it is? It's so stupid. It's very Twitter lazy. It's oh, Twitter. Okay. Yeah. And it's also like pretending you're Twitter. smart. Like you're Unserious for using the word Unserious. Yeah. Dumbass. Okay. Yeah. Just there's words for that. We don't need to be like unserious. Yeah, like open a dictionary. Like, you don't have to say unserious. Yeah, silly. I don't believe. I don't. I don't really use Twitter. So you think you're better than us? That is for the best. But <laughs> does Charlie post selfies on Twitter? Sometimes. Yeah. Well, he posts photos of you constantly. Pictures of yeah. me. He's, yeah, he's, he's like, like this I bitch hate stole this bitch. my word. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking so much shit. They're all like sub, like subliminal. Yeah. Like. He's like, this bitch isn't on Twitter, so I can finally speak freely. He's like, you know, when you're friends with someone who just steals your shit, <laughs> it's really fucked up when friends don't do- trust. Wow, her. I thought I knew you. <laughs> Some friend, huh? Thousands of retweets. If you see this bitch on the street, cross, run, go as far away as you can, and don't let him hear you talk. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm really happy. Actually, like, I'm really glad we got to pictures being worth less than a thousand words. That because feels really satisfying. It's kind of like one of my most profoundly held beliefs. Like, moving towards a visual culture was a mistake. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. We need to get back to the written word. Everyone needs to be reading newspapers. Yes. And we need to be journaling nonstop. Yes. 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 Wow. I mean, this is January 3rd. This is January 3rd. It's January 3rd. And by the way, it, this actually really ties back into Pelly because you created a new word. Mm-hmm. You and Charlie, excuse me, created a new <laughs> word. And actually, rather than taking a selfie, why not try to create a new word? Yes. <gasps> that is the 2023 challenge. Create a new create word. Create a new word and have fun. And put down your fucking and make phone a lot of and money create a new word. <laughs> yeah. And fucking sell it. And just get sell out it there out. Just and sell, sell it, it. Yeah. Pitch it. Like, make it work. Like, <laughs> like nobody <Literally>. handed <laughs> Richard anything, and yet he made Pelly yeah. happen. Exactly. <laughs> He's just like God, a guy with really, a it's like photography. The idea that the average person thinks a photo is more important than Pelly is so infuriating <laughs> oh to me. God. I'm pissed. I'm actually furious. <laughs> wow. So wow. rarely can you be like, I invented a word. I know. I'm so jealous of whoever invented biatch. I know. I know. That's such a, like, wow. What a. I'm jealous classic. of even whoever invented, like, booyah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Oh, my God. Kawabanga? Amazing. Yeah, that's like a movement. Like, those words are part of a movement. Yeah. Those words, like, define generations. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're cyclical. It'll probably come back. <laughs> It'll probably come back and it'll be nostalgic. It'll be like, oh my God, booyah, with a Polaroid picture. All right. That's it. That's it. I'm fucking creating a word in 2023. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I think it's so funny that it actually, like, I keep trying to invent a word right now as we're talking. And I'm like, no, we can't. And I, like, yeah. struggle with it. Like, I'll be like, yeah. Maureen. And I'm like, no, that's a person's name. Wait, your word is Maureen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sam. What would it? Let's say your word is Maureen, the the female name Maureen. What would that? What would that mean in, okay. in this in this sort oh of universe? God. Maureen. I think it's like all like it almost means like like you're like tired, like you're like like you're like yes, exhausted. Exactly. That's like what Maureen. I was gonna say. Yeah. Maureen. Yes. Wait, that's really good. 
<laughs> yeah, it's like after a long day of work. Uh, Maureen. Oh, <laughs> Maureen. Wow. Oh my God, that Sam. could really take off. That's really good. That That's could really, really good. take off. And you could spell it different than the name. Oh, of you course. could do like M U R E E N if you want. Well, if I know anything about Maureen, the people, they are a litigious group and they'll come for me if I use yeah. their name. <laughs> exactly. You don't want to be sued. Um, Maureen. Wow. wow. <laughs> Maureen. I'm so excited to start using Maureen. I am too. George, do you want to try to come up with a word really quick? I, oh my god, I'm so nervous. I mean, okay, let me try. Just let it flow. Yeah. Felka. Felka. <laughs> wow. I love Felka. Okay, what does That's it mean? Pretty. What does it, what does it, it mean? It's a very pretty word. Thank you. Felka. Yeah, it's very feminine. I mean, it's, it's like, but well, no, it's feminine but strong. Yeah, very, very strong. You know what strong. it is? It's a bit of like, it's somewhere between excuse me and thank you. <gasps> you are a genius. <laughs> wow. It's like Falca. Falca. Okay. Falca. Yeah. Wait, yes. Falca? Falca. I can't oh, believe Falca. this. <laughs> Wait, yeah, it's it's like, you know, you're in someone's way, but you're not exactly apologizing because you've been Falca? taught not, you know, you've, you, yeah. yeah. It's sort of a, a general purpose, polite thing to say when uh, you are around strangers. Yes. Wow. It's something you can say when some when the waiter gives you more wine. It's something you can say you know after after you're done purchasing a sweater at Zara. Oh my god! And like if you bump amazing. into someone, you can be like Felka. You bump into, yeah, that's Felka. Genius. Also, even if you're like if you're like wondering if someone's in line, you can open with yes. Felka. Yeah. Like you can be like Felka, Wait. are you in line? <laughs> yeah. It's sort of, it's sort of in the same family as the German Bitte, which is like sort of like a you know. <laughs> wow, That's so I good. love Felka. Felka, That's amazing. I'm sorry, but Peli, Maureen, and Felka already are more impactful than any photograph any has ever. ever ever taken. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, I'm glad we got there. That really did a lot for me. Wow, I am truly on cloud nine. I feel relieved. Yeah. Why do you feel relieved? Because I feel like. My choice wasn't so bad. Oh my god, it was such a good choice, and and the fact that it was so related to, to word, to words. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, should we do our final segment? Yeah, I think we have okay. to. Richard, our final segment is called shout outs, and in it we give a shout out um, to anything that we're enjoying in sort of the classic street tradition. Imagine it's two thousand one. You're at TRL, and you're shouting out to your squad back home. Um, just about anything that you like. And I actually do have one. Okay. So I can go first. Unless... Go for it. What's up, everybody across the globe? I want to give a huge shout out to gay photographers. I support you. You are the troops. I love you. Yes, we have slandered you on this podcast, but I love you. And I think the work that you are doing is so important because you understand that sometimes... You just want to be a little horny and not like look at porn, but you do want to be like mm-hmm. seeing something kind <laughs> of hot and like, yeah, you like put a little artistic spin on it. And I think that's beautiful. Um, shout out to my friend Bryson. Hi, Bryson. I love you. Woo! Woo! You are a gay photographer and you took sexy pics of me and I will put them on the internet one day. But today is not that day. <laughs> and all gay photographers out there. I'm open to it, and I want it. Woo! Woo! Try again. Wow, that was so good. <laughs> All right, give me one second. It's gonna come to me. Nothing you're grateful for. You have nothing you're grateful for. <clears throat> You'd be surprised. <laughs> oh. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Go for it. What's up, everybody? I hope everyone is having such a good new year, and I hope you guys are all slaying the adulting game in the in the new month and the new year and the new week. Happy Tuesday from all of us here on the team, and I just want to give a shout-out to 
kind of rejecting the impulse to find, to read something as a metaphor. I just watched the film Bones and All, where Timothy Chalamet plays a cannibal, and I found myself thinking, is this a metaphor for homosexuality? Is this a metaphor for drug abuse? Is this a metaphor for addiction? Is this a metaphor for adolescence? And guess what, stupid whore, that's me talking to myself, it doesn't have to be a metaphor, because we're not in the fucking ninth grade. So maybe try enjoying art for what it is, letting it sink into your little brain for multiple days, weeks, and even months, and actually appreciating it rather than trying to write a book report. And with that, I say, Happy New Year, and let's get it, kings and queens. Woo! Um, that's a beautiful one. <laughs> that was uplifting. You know, someone told me that it's like a metaphor for, um, like, not eating meat. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, someone would say that. <laughs> um, I also saw that movie, Weird Movie Alert. Wait, I actually loved it. Did you? I didn't love it, but I didn't dislike you it. Did. I was okay. just like weird. Like I was kind of like, yeah. I felt nothing emotionally, but like enjoyed the swing. Oh, totally. I do agree that it was weird. <laughs> like <laughs> you were kind of like, wait, th- like this is what Timothy and Luca Guadagnino are doing? Like, yeah. kind of random. Mm, kind of random vibes. It, it really is the definition of random alert, that movie. And Timothy was really not working for me, actually, in that movie, unfortunately. I think I have heard people say that. I do think the girl, Taylor Russell, the I loved her. She was so good. But I don't know. I really did appreciate the swing. Sorry, last thing I'll say, and then I promise I'll shut up. When Chloe Sevigny shows up in that movie, I mean, I almost fucking, like wanted to pull a lever so I would be like launched into the ceiling out of excitement, not a negative thing. I was, that was actually where it turned to me where the random sauce got a little too strong. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. And I said, I can't take anything seriously anymore. Oh wow. We really had opposite reactions. I was eating it up. (laughs) Yeah. I would, I feel like I would like that, but I haven't watched the movie yet. You should watch it. I, I think I will. Richard, would you like to give a shout out? Of course. Okay, whenever Whenever you're ready. ready. What's happening, everybody? How's everyone doing? Reporting live from January 3rd. Woo! Happy New Year's, everyone. I hope that you start the new year out feeling good because I'll tell you what, I feel really good because of my shout out. And that is to my dear friend, Charlie Barday. <laughs> Charlie is my good friend who um, I just have to shout out legally <laughs> to say that he is the inventor of my most recent project, Pelly. <laughs> the way that we have fun with words is so delicious. And I'm so grateful that he brought that to me, that he came up to me and said, I'm going to start saying this, which I took as I will too. And, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and I, um, I'm also just, uh, so grateful to be working on such fruitful, meaningful projects together. 2023. Woo! Charlie Friday. Shout out. Wow. Shout out to Charlie. Shout out to Charlie. Has he been shout out more, more, more than multiple times you know i think we did shout him out before i do think we've shouted him out before he's really part of the lore of the podcast yeah whether it's it's kind of tough because it's um you know he didn't necessarily agree to being part of the lore but he he is yeah well i mean he has done the podcast twice and been in a live show so it's not (laughs) exactly like he's said no (laughs) that's true that's true he loves it he loves it he loves it. Well, Richard, it's been incredible to have you on. Thank you so much. This has been so fun. This has been a dream. And this is going to be the, one of the greatest episodes ever. Pelly. Pelly. I really like the the fact Pelly. that Pelly. Pelly. <laughs> but also, honestly, Maureen a little Maureen. bit. <laughs> Maureen. We all started very Maureen. We yeah. did start very Maureen. And then we were like, we were like, we were like, all right, uh, Falca, you can go first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Felka was, you know, kind of uh, interspersed throughout. We're warm. We're doing work. We're like getting yeah. through it. And now we're yeah. going to end with Pally. 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 Um, all right. All right. And that's on Pally. That's on Pally. Happy New Year, all. Happy New Year. Bye. 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 Bye.